Hello and welcome back to my channel. My name is Carolyn and if you're just joining me, this is our year of the heart. Every year we have something different that we're doing on the channel, always with the simple abundance principles in mind. And we're going to be going through Brene Brown's book, brand new book, I should say, Atlas of the Heart. And, and as always, like tonight's video, I do sprinkle in things that have to do with the principles that we talk about on the channel and self-improvement and planning and just my crazy sticker fetish and everything. So tonight I wanted to tell you about some new things that I'm doing in my journals and planners this year. And I really have one main planner as I've shared with you before. I use the Franklin Covey system. However, and we have a kitty in the background, um, I do love happy planner stickers and I will usually embellish my, my um, you know, monthly view in the planner and then also like I'll get to a certain, I don't really have any to do tasks in some of these things, but you can see I, I use the stickers in here to block off times. And I also, since I made my video of the walkthrough of this new daily point of view page setup that I have, I remember sharing with you guys that I was disappointed that in the daily Franklin Covey setup, there's no weekly view with the task list. And I always sort of altered that anyway and did a half side for business and work and then a half side for, for personal. So what I have done is on Sundays, I do that every week. So I use the note page for Sundays. And then also I always have like, right now I'm using otters. I always have like a little sticky something so that I can get back to that page easily. Of course, just like with any Franklin planner, I do have my middle uh, page finder. And I have a saying here from Louise Hay, love, peace, joy, all is well. So that is that gets moved as my days go along. But I can always refer back to that, that weekly view. And you will remember from 2020 when I told you about my special page for each month. And at the time, we were going through Sarah Von Bronick's book, Simple Abundance. I don't know why Annabelle's so frisky right now. She always likes to make herself known. That's my kitty co-host. Um, I was using the special pages. It's just like a, it's a, a photo that, I, that I'll take. And this is not copyright or anything. It's from Pixabay, which is a free photo site. Um, and I, I've tried to incorporate the heart. This is a moon that's shaped like a heart. So I'll use something with a heart every month and I have a quote on it as well. But uh, you'll remember that in the past on the back of it, I had the simple joys of the whatever month we were in. And they were the uh, joyful simplicities from Simple Abundance. And then I would sprinkle in my own things. Well, so I have totally changed the back of my of my uh, monthly divider. I told you guys about like when I went through the various principles, thinking about s simple abundance, joy, harmony, beauty, order, simplicity, and gratitude, that I had come up with things that I could do for each of those, those principles from Sarah. And then also I read you Brene Brown's and Louise Hayes and also Dr. Wayne Dyer's things. So I came up with the ones that really resonate the most with me and I'm gonna just this is a better printout than the the back of my sheet so I'll fold it here so it's easier so I put on the top of it living with the heart in January so I'll change it each month the first thing is the something to look forward to and remember last year that was my envelope that I was opening up but now this year I'm coming up with those special things. So I will put my January special thing, which is coming up in two weeks. And then I also mentioned to you that I wanted to continue donating to a cause every month. So I have a spot for that. What is my cause gonna be for this month? And then if you will remember also from Simple Abundance, Sarah encouraged us to take creative excursions. These are sort of mini dates, special times with yourself. Ideally, she was always encouraging us to do at least one creative excursion per week. I put three lines because I feel like 
I almost put two because I thought, well, if I could get two in in the month, that would be good. But I thought, all right, I'll challenge myself with three. And I could always write an extra one if I do get one in each week. But I want to have attainable goals. <laughs> and then one of Sarah's principles is order. We know that. So I have two areas. It says order slash organize. Two areas that I will focus on. And again, these are things like, first of all, I made a list of all the ideas for creative excursions. So if you want to do something like this, I encourage you to actually sit down and brainstorm some things so that every month you're not going like, what are my favorite creative excursions? <laughs> or like, what stores do I like to go to? Or what what are the things that like I like to do special for myself? Um, and so again, with the order ones, I sat down and I came up with more than 12, so that's why I put two lines by that one. So I'm not trying to do 10 different areas each month. Like I might do, like I mentioned, under the bed or like the kitchen uh, drawers or something like that or underneath a sink, that kind of thing. All right, and then with the joyful, joyful simplicities that we did have from Sarah Von Bronick's book, I am giving myself three lines for that and I called it simple joys and for me that one means remember that a lot of simple abundance was or is I should say is reveling in the senses so say we're in winter right now so maybe one of my seasonal joys will be sipping hot chocolate and watching the birds or something like that so it could be something that incorporates the senses it could be an experience like maybe this is not one of mine, but maybe you're a big skier or something and you always want to go skiing every year. So there's a, three lines for seasonal joys and I might even do more than three, but again, why I want to make it attainable. This one is from Brene, music, song, and dance, because I do, I do like to take in theater and dance and music and, and I mean, I like to even do that stuff myself too. So I have one, one spot for that. And more with Brene uh, and her guideposts. I have laughter, play, and then I added the word projects. So to me, I consider, and I have three lines for that one. So I consider those to be maybe something creative that I'm gonna do. And again, I sat down and I did a whole page in my journal. My journal is this hardcover journal that is where I do all of my thinking. So I have my planner for actually like organizing my life, but then my journal is where I'm coming up with ideas and mulling things over. So I came up with ideas and I even, I had to look online. Remember when we were doing the section of Simple Abundance and, and we were trying to like, how do you have a hobby? That kind of thing Sarah was asking us. And you go on the internet and you look up like, how do I find hobbies as an adult? Well, I looked up ideas for creative projects. Some of them came to me easily, but then I needed the help of some websites. So I made a list of a lot of different ideas of things that I could do. And then I wrote down some personal things like that I've want, been wanting to do. Like I have my oil diffuser here on my desk on this wood box that I've been wanting to paint. It, I got it at a craft store and it's like the perfect material to paint it. So like that was one of the things I put on and I also want to redo my affirmation decks and maybe come up with some new ones. So I put up some, I put some personal ones to me that I have been thinking of that I've been wanting to do. So I, I actually have three lines for that and that's because there's laughter, play, and projects. So remember play is like just unstructured fun it has no purpose it doesn't necessarily have to be creating something like a project might be a creative endeavor that i want to do but play could just be like me playing with annabelle or me going and swinging on the swings um and laughter like i, I think it's really important that i put that one on here because if i didn't have it on there then i probably would just go through life and not really think about it but I got together with some friends over the Christmas holiday and I was laughing hysterically at a bunch of things and I thought wow I have not like it's the kind of laughing where your like stomach hurts or you feel like you might pee your pants and I haven't laughed like that in so long so I thought I really want to make that a part of like a conscious intention and like this is like a checklist to remind myself um, you know, I'm going to set these intentions at the beginning of the month, but I will fill them in also as they come. So I might have an idea of like a creative excursion that I'm going to take, 
or something might just happen and then I write it in afterwards. So it's gonna start blank like this and then I'll be writing the things in. The next one is, this is from Louise Hay, growth, healing, and then I added resilience from Brene Brown. So I have one thing on there and that could be like work that I'm doing in therapy or just reminding myself of ways that I am becoming more resilient. Remember when we were talking about Brene's book, The Gifts of Imperfection, and she said one of the things that 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 really is about heart, heartfelt living or wholehearted living, she calls it, is that the people that are living that way, they have resilience and I just, I think I've probably had it, but because people tell me I'm strong or they say, uh, encouraging words but sometimes you just feel so broken that so I have it on there to remind myself that that line could be anything I'm doing for my own growth it could be like reading the book with you guys and healing could be like healing modalities that I do or healing activities and therapy and resilience is just really to remind myself that I have to think about the ways that I am becoming more resilient I have a line for beauty and harmony and so that could be something like we talked about beauty could be where you're setting up a nice table setting and you're eating at the table and and harmony is like things in balance in your life so that one I put those two together because I thought they kind of go together and I just have one line for that and then remember that and I again I took liberty with some of these and and the way that I put things together and and uh, and added my own words because this one is like um, rest was one of Brene Brown's it was in another guidepost with other words so I put rest and recover and honor together because I also want to honor my feelings and honor that I'm following my heart and maybe my heart wants me to take a nap or something like that again it could be with the rest and recover and then at the bottom I have instead of in my past one I had unforgettable days I put unforgettable moments so it doesn't have to be the whole day, but it just, I want to, that would be something at the end of the month or like right after it happened that I wanna write down. So again, this is like a list of things that, that it's going to sort of keep me on track on a lot of the principles, a, a grouping of various principles, mainly Simple Abundance, but also some of Brene's guideposts and Louise, uh, Louise Hayes, uh, suggestions for creating an exceptional life so that's my list and I I suppose it can change and evolve and maybe I will think that as I go along I'll be like oh I, I need to take out a line because I just never have three of that one but then I'm coming up with three of a different one and there's plenty of room for me to add more to it so that's what I'm calling living with heart and I'm putting you know I put the month on it and then, like I said, I usually just choose an image and I, and I do the whole punches so that it fits into my Franklin Covey planner. So I mentioned that I sort of have a Franklin planner in that I use the Franklin Covey planning system and pages, but then I love to decorate with Happy Planner stickers. And speaking of Happy Planner, I have two Happy Planners here that are, I use them as well, one is sort of a planner, and this one is definitely a notebook. This planner is for, it has uh, calendars in here, and it has a note page. This is for tracking my activity, because that is something that I'm trying to motivate myself to do more of. So whenever I go over and walk on the treadmill, I put that in. And I probably should give myself stickers, because I like that too. And then this is just a, a regular happy planner notebook and it has the dividers in it too so like for instance over the weekend I didn't really want to put this in my planner I I had a list of things that I wanted to bring with me in the car and so this is sort of just like an extra thing of notes and it's not something that I definitely want to keep in my planner like for future reference I can also put projects and things in there. And then I still am using my Erin Condren Financial Peace um, notebook. 
I personalized this as you can do with Erin Condren and I counted the pages I can do this year and next year and one of the things that I did on New Year's Day was and I always do this at the beginning of the year I have a page where I track how I did over the last year I do a brand new um, Excel spreadsheet sorry the words are not coming easily tonight uh, that shows how many more payments I have on on a, a certain loan that I'm still working on and and I just write down also my goals I have I had already written my financial goals in my journal as well but I always like I remember last year I showed you how I I put things like stickers on the bottom and, and so I printed out and then I decorate it and I was looking at my goals for last year too and that was another thing I did there was one two three four five that I didn't attain but um, but I did really well because one two three four five six seven there were seven things that I did and and stuck to and one of them actually I had I had set a goal for myself to have more income coming in for the work that I do at home and I had set a I've well surpassed that so that was kind of neat I didn't realize that I had set it actually as low as I had because I thought whoa I'm like really making way more than that so I should have been revisiting these financial goals probably more often during the year but it's just nice to have a special page and and get motivated and some of my goals carry over to the next year and one of my goals is to be more more uh, conscientious about not skipping a month because I have to admit that with December with the holidays I didn't do a page like I you can go back and watch that video if you want to see how I set up my financial book but I just December was like out the window I feel like Christmas just came and went so fast but I, I like the beginning of the year I like the end of the year too um, when everything's wrapping up and I can put together things like, like remember my outbox here? I like I need to go through that and get all of my financial stuff together for the end of the year. So there's other places that I'm making lists and a lot of that goes in my planner. So that's what I'm doing. And I hope that maybe that inspires you a little bit. I'm really excited about my new, my new sheet because it's, it's different than before and maybe you might take something from it and and uh, map out a similar sort of thing and thank you for being here we will continue on with our our I almost just said the wrong thing our year to shine that was last year but this is our year of the heart so we will continue on together and I will continue to share things as they come up and I'd love to hear from you so please say hello and I hope that your 2022 is off to a great start Love to you all. Bye-bye.